a longstanding challenge uh, that faces the field of education is connecting its knowledge and research about what good practice entails with the practices that actually happen in classrooms every day. Three practices that have been shown to have a, a positive effect are uh, when teachers provide feedback to students uh, about their performance. Uh, a second one is when teachers employ uh, precise classroom management techniques uh, to keep students on task and engaged at high levels. A third one is when they use cognitive strategies to help students master specific lessons. Madeline Hunter has shown that when a teacher includes work examples and student practice in a teacher-led lesson, then uh, the student learning and the quality of instruction overall are positively affected. Uh, similarly, Robert Slavin has shown that when a teacher requires interdependence, uh, sink or swim among students in group work, then the quality of a cooperative learning approach is also dramatically increased. So while the research shows that certain practices done certain ways produce certain effects, uh, the research also shows that these practices are yet to become routine practice of teachers at scale. Alan Bain and I developed the software toolkit that's examined in this study. Uh, the toolkit supports three teaching approaches. Uh, one approach is strategic teach or direct teach. The other is cooperative learning. And then the third approach is problem-based instruction. Uh, each approach has an extensive body of research that shows when specific practices and task structures are present, then the instructional quality of that approach is much better than when the structures and practices aren't present. In the research design for this study, uh, observed quality of instruction was the dependent variable. Uh, toolkit was the independent variable, and the treatment duration was 225 days. A matched comparison, repeated Bayesian design for intact groups was applied by a third-party team of researchers. Those researchers gathered data using structured protocols. Each of the three instructional approaches of the toolkit had a special protocol. There were no significant differences between the treatment and the control groups at, at pretest. An analysis of variance uh, on the other data collections uh, showed that there was a main effect for treatment that was significant and that there were significant uh, differences uh, among the main effect at measurement occasion. Now, follow-up comparison showed that the differences between the treatment and the control groups were statistically significant. The effect size for this difference, 1.54, exceeds Cohen's convention for a large effect size. Findings of the study led strong support to a view that technology in the form of a toolkit can mediate research-proven practices and classroom instruction in a way that improves overall instructional quality. The improvement was evident in the post-test comparison that showed an effect size of 1.54. The improvement in instructional quality uh, co-varied uh, with the amount of teacher use of the toolkit, its modules, and the cycle of quality instruction. Uh, these findings stand in contrast to a majority of field-based studies of technology in various forms that have had difficulty empirically demonstrating educational effects of technology on education over time. <music>